Hey folks, thanks for joining me today for this workflow walkthrough. Today's walkthrough is going to be a, f a moon photograph that I just shot yesterday from my backyard, and I thought it might be fun to show you the camera equipment that I used to take the image. So here's the rig. I'm going to try hard to show it to you without dropping it. This is my uh, Olympus OMD EM1 Mark I. So not a particularly spectacular or special camera. It's a micro four-thirds camera with 18 megapixels. And what I've got on it here is a Vivitar zoom lens 80 to 205 constant aperture 3.8 from probably sometime in the late 70s to mid 80s. Um, this is a pretty common lens that a lot of enthusiasts bought for film cameras. It is, of course, manual focus and um, manual zoom and all that good stuff. And a simple adapter allows me to connect it to my Micro Four Thirds camera. Now, the equivalent uh, focal range on this then will be a 160 to 410 millimeters. Uh, and I shot this at 410 millimeters with the in-body in image stabilization on the Olympus turned on, and manually focused, of course, and that's what the image is you're about to see. Darkroom. Today we're going to take the moonshot image, raw file, shown on the right side of my screen, and turn it into the finished process file that you see on the left side of my screen. All this will be done using basic tools in Darktable. Nothing fancy today. All right, so. Here we have the raw file. You can see from the histogram that most of the raw file is exposed well to the left and I'm nowhere near any of my highlights. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into basic adjustments and I'm going to start turning up exposure until I get some of my highlights up on the close to the edge here. I'll turn on my overexposure indicator so I can turn this up. That's two stops. Go a little bit more than that, maybe. Oh, nope, I'm starting to blow it out when I get past two and a quarter stops. So I'm going to keep that at two, which keeps everything in check. All right, that's the first step. Now I'm going to uh, do most of the rest of my work in the tone module, uh, tone curve module, and then we'll see where we need to go from there. So let's go into the tone curve. Only thing I'm really interested in here is the moon. So I'm going to adjust the tones that are shown in the moon. The way I can do that is by looking at my eyedropper here. It says control click to select an area. So I'm going to control click it. And it's going to give me a little box. I'm going to draw a little box over the moon. And I can see that the tones of the moon all fall into this upper range here, which is what I expected. So the first thing I want to do is take the darkest parts of the moon and pull them down take the brightest parts of the moon and raise them up and create a little localized S curve just for for my moon. Now of course the rest of the image is getting dark as well and I'm just barely starting to clip here I can see some little red indicators. Let's just pull that back a tiny bit. Okay <clears throat> now I've uh, am frankly most of the way there to my other image. So now we just need to spend some time working on the uh, contrast of the image and the sharpening of the image to give it some some good oomph. Let me pull my tone curve back up here and I'm going to think I'm going to just pull down the darker parts of the image. I really want the tree branches to be close to silhouettes uh, while preserving a little bit of color in the sky. Okay, good. First thing I want to do is jump in the local contrast mode. We'll turn that on. I'm going to cut down the local contrast in the highlights. Turn up the detail. Turn off my overexposure indicators. Okay, that's getting there. Not quite what I uh, what I want though. Not all the way. So I'm going to come into the contrast equalizer and I'm going to pull up the right side here which is my fine details and start to there we go start to bring some 
more contrast into the details of the moon. <clears throat> Zooming in here, I see I got pretty good sharpness on uh, old Luna. I can see some nice rays coming out from the impact crater here. Good all around. I can play around with this, see what happens when I... Yeah, that gets a little little carried away. Let's, let's reset the curve, and we'll stick with... Uh, finest details here and bring those up without <clears throat> messing around too much with the rest of the image. Okay, now one of the things that started to happen is I've introduced some fine grain noise and that may be very difficult to see on a YouTube video, but I can see the blue sky here doesn't look doesn't look smooth. Uh, it's got a little bit of noise, so I'm going to go ahead into the uh, denoise profiled and I'm going to turn that on by default. And I know by default I'm probably not going to like what it does to my moon. Yeah, it flattens out a lot of details on my moon. So that's easy for me to solve. I'll do that with a uh, drawn mask. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to, uh, it's not quite a full moon, but I'm going to use a circular mask. I happen to have one in here just about the size of my moon, basically because I worked on this photograph before. And I'm going to plop that in. Now, <clears throat> currently, if I show my mask, I'll see that the moon is masked out right now, so the denoise is only being applied to the moon. That's not what I want, so I want to reverse the polarity. Click this button here, reverses the polarity of my mask. Turn that off, and now I have nice smooth skies, and I have a nice moon. I still have a little crescent here underneath the moon that is, is noisy uh, because it's uh, obviously, well, it's not part of the sky, it is part of the moon, but it was not a full moon, so it's not quite round. I'll solve that with uh, by adding some brushes to my mask. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and make it my life easier. I'm going to grab a brush, and I'm just going to... soften the edge of the brush a little bit. And I'm going to paint out this area here. And I'm going to add another brush. And I'm going to paint this area out here. Now, the brushes are not inverted. So they're actually creating more noise around the moon. And I'll show you that's an easy thing to to fix, we'll come over here to our mask manager and brush one and brush two are my two brushed in masks. And I can right click on that and say, okay, I want to use the inverted shape and I want to use the intersection of the two shapes. I'll do the same thing with brush two, use inverted and use intersection. Now if I click on my mask indicator, I see that the circular mask has been applied and then these, these brush masks have been applied here. And if I wanted to, I could spend some time refining these, but you can't see it on the final image, so I won't bother. <coughs> okay, turn that mask indicator off. Close the noise module and zoom out to the full size image. So now I have the detail I want in the moon, I have the contrast I want between the moon and the sky, and the last thing I'm going to do here is just going to crop this in a little bit to uh, bring the moon close to the to the rule of thirds mark, and it'll also make it slightly larger in the final image. And that's it folks. Done. Shooting the moon with cheap equipment and free software, and I think the results are pretty good. Thanks for joining me.